Hello, everyone. Welcome to our module on guided inquiry, which is centered on asking powerful questions. This is considered the heart and soul of coaching. Let's learn what are the questions that we need to ask our coaches in order to elicit the most important response coming from them. As a coach, there are a lot of things that we can learn from just by using powerful questions. One of my favorite authors, Mark Twain, mentioned, he who asks is a fool for five minutes, but he who does not ask remains a fool forever. The art of powerful questioning is so critical that we get to learn so many things from information, and this time in our coaching session from our coaching. I always believe that in every person that I meet, he knows something that I do not know. And when I'm very much interested to know things, I ask a lot of questions, even if sometimes I would look foolish on that note. Sabi nga ni Ramon Bautista, the only stupid question that one person will ask is the question that is never asked. Because this can leave us clueless. We lost that opportunity to be able to be well-informed on something. And my favorite inspirational speaker, a banker and entrepreneur, Farshad Asal mentioned, a good coach asks great questions to help you remove the obstacle in your mind and to get you back on track in your life. So powerful questioning is very important and a skill that will not only help the coachee, but it will also develop us as coaches. Effective questioning that will help us seek additional information, solicit suggestions, explore the coachee's feelings, check for understanding in terms of their response, discover their reasons, and assess their commitment to action. We will be learning four types of coaching questions. These are closed, open, probing, and leading questions. But a caveat, leading questions would be the questions that we will take sparingly. Let's begin with closed questions. These are the questions that are easy to ask. Closed questions can be binary. It can be answered by a yes or no or a particular or specific response. Like for example, when you ask, are you having a hard time with your new position? Is it hard for you to speak in front of a crowd? What are the advantages of closed questions? Mas madali yung pagtatanong, mas mabilis nating nakukumpara yung sagot ng ating coaching, there's a better reliability when it comes to data, hindi mo kailangan ng skills when it comes to questioning, pag-closed questions ng ating tinatanong, at ang focus ng coaching ay talaga doon sa reply na ibibigay na sa atin. But some disadvantages to closed questions would be it can be boring for coaches kung mga yes or no questions lang. It will not provide us with data or answers that can help contextualize where the coachee is coming from. And we may miss out other areas if we will only ask closed questions. Closed questions can lead to binary answers or specific answers, but we can use them to, number one, focus on the response of our coaching. So we can ask, are you satisfied with your progress? We can also use this to confirm what the coaching just mentioned. So your big problem is your scheduling in terms of time. We can also ask close questions to keep both the coachee and the coach in agreement. Do we agree that your current performance will not take you to your career goals? The third type of question would be the probing questions. For probing questions, this gives a chance to clarify statements made by the coachee. So for example, you may ask, how did it exactly happen? How did that impact you as an employee? What specifically did you do as a result of that? 
the advantage of probing questions is that it provides better insight. It can supply details and putting the answers in terms of context. And it can show that as a coach, we are interested in the conversation. However, one disadvantage is that sometimes it can appear or sound threatening. Probing questions are fundamental to effective communication through dialogue. It will help us as a coach to understand our coachee in order to determine his or her performance issues. So we can ask, have you tried doing this? What do you think is the best way to counter that? What would happen if you try doing? Okay. And the last type of questions would be the leading questions. For leading questions, it pushes coachy to answer in a specific manner based on the way our question is framed. It contains information that coachy wants to confirm rather than try to get a true unbiased answer to our question. Ito po yung question na iingatan natin kasi as much as possible, we don't want to spoon feed or give ideas to our coachy. So for example, when you ask, last December 10, is it true that you had slammed the office door and shouted loudly at the guard while carrying the equipment? Maybe we can just ask, what happened last December 10? Another leading question would be, do you get along with your office mates? This may be a hint na parang sinasabi natin na, Yung coaching, hindi talaga niyo makasundo yung mga office mates niya. So probably a better question would be, can you tell me about your relationship with your office mates? Another leading question is, why did you disappoint your manager? Maybe this can be an assumption on the part of the coach. So a proper question could be, why did your manager act that way? As a coach, it's very important that we have the proper tools in asking questions. If we don't know how to ask the right question, we will not discover anything from our coaching. Even the simple questions, what, where, when, why, and how, can give us an idea on how our coaching will answer. I hope you learned something from this module on guided inquiry. Maraming salamat po.